All horror movie monsters are weird in their own special way, but some, some stand out far above the rest. Their strange looks, actions, and often smells stick with folks for ages after the credits roll. It isn't always because they were particularly scary, sometimes the outrageous does a better job of burning images into people's memories. Sure, we've talked about the weirdest horror movies on here many times, but how often do we get to focus on the monsters that have reached peak unique? Clear your schedules, you'll want to make some time to watch whatever the hell I'm talking about after this video. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host Keegan Hughes and today we're going to talk about the top 5 weirdest horror movie monsters. If you're looking for more monsters after this, make sure to check out our monster playlist. Hours and hours of ghoulish content for you there. Wicked, let's get going. Coming in at number 5, we've got Audrey 2. You, you saved me, you saved me, trouble, feed me now! Uh, I can't. I'm starving! Look, maybe I can squeeze a little more out of this one. As a kid, I heard about Audrey 2 and thought nothing of it, which is strange because I doubt anyone could come up with a weirder concept. But somehow, after years of success on and off Broadway, along with a major motion picture starring Rick Moranis, Audrey 2 became an icon. Audrey 2 is a gigantic, bloodthirsty Venus flytrap that can sing to express its needs. And it's named after a woman the florist has a crush on. And it comes from outer space? Goodness gracious. The carnivorous plant causes all sorts of trouble and somehow turns Seymour into a local celebrity of sorts, which, let's be honest, probably wouldn't happen if a plant like this showed up. The government would get involved and it would get carted away off to some top secret research facility. But in Little Shop of Horrors, Audrey 2 sings and grooves and eats a dentist, followed by a business owner. Hell, a TV network wants to run a show on it and someone else wants to breed them out and sell them across the world. Who are these people? This is an obvious dangerous plant. Like if I saw something like that, I would take off running. Although I suppose this version of Skid Row they live in is supposed to be desensitized to this kind of stuff. Audrey needs blood and he's got more than enough. Coming in at number four, we've got Killer Tomatoes. <laughs> Staying on the theme of deadly plant life, let's catch up to some killer tomatoes. Get it? Catch up? Catch up? I can hear the don't quit your day jobs already. You know, I can see how a Venus flytrap could be considered scary. Hell, even vines are made out to be pretty terrifying and a whole bunch of horror, but tomatoes? My goodness. But that is indeed the premise of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, and the movie really commits to its insane monster. By some unknown process, the red fruits rise up and begin to kill anyone they come across. You would think the gag would go cold pretty fast, but they come up with all sorts of scenarios for the tomatoes to thrill. A man drinks some killer tomato juice, and I don't mean it was especially tasty. It literally kills him. I never understood the appeal of tomato juice in the first place. It's like cold tomato soup. Good riddance. But then they start eating people. Talk about turning the tables. There's even an aquatic tomato sequence doing its best to replicate the kind of fear Jaws caused. It might not be quite as effective as a shark attack, but underwater killer tomatoes are at least five times as weird, if not more. And you know how your parents would tell you not to worry about movie blood when you were a kid? After reminding you it's all make-believe, they would say, oh, that's not real blood, it's ketchup. Well, this time the ketchup is the real fright. Man, if the fact that an entire feature film was made about Killy Tomatoes doesn't bring a smile to your face, I don't know what to say. Name a monster that's more ridiculous. Well, I guess I suppose that's what the rest of this list is for. Coming in at number three, we've got Carnivorous Rabbits. From plants to plant eaters, we've got them all. Anyone who grew up watching Bugs Bunny knows exactly how dastardly and cunning rabbits can be, but they've never been as bloodthirsty as they are in Night of the Lepus. Enormous, violent, and looking for blood, these rabbits are science's biggest mistake. The Wikipedia article says the movie used domestic rabbits filmed against miniature models and actors dressed in rabbit costumes to film the attack scenes. And boy, it's a show. 
The juxtaposition is actually kind of hilarious. It's montage theory taken to its most ridiculous extreme. You get scenes where people look out the window and see these so-called giant rabbits hustling along, but they just look like rabbits. They don't look murderous or hungry for flesh. Then all of a sudden a man in a fursuit tackles the screaming victim and we're supposed to believe that the rabbits did it. It's entertaining, sure, but the premise is so disorienting when put to film. You've got to give the filmmakers credit for following through as best they could with the idea. See, instead of killing the overpopulated rabbits with some poison, scientists decided to try out experimental hormones to prevent them from giving birth. If you're a scientist in a horror movie and you hear the word experimental, it's time to run. Naturally, these hormones cause the rabbits to grow exponentially, and with that growth comes a hunger that can only be satisfied by human flesh. I suppose Monty Python and Bunicula did rabbit horror too, but at least they managed to make their floppy-eared carnivores kind of scary. Coming in at number two, we've got Deathbed, the bed that eats. I just love saying that out loud. It's so much fun. Look, I know it was a long walk, and you're probably tired and you've had some second thoughts, but there's nothing to be afraid of. Now, if you really want, we'll walk all the way back. But think about it, huh? Now we've gone from vegetation taking revenge to rabbits running rampant, now we've got literal beds searching for souls. This flies in the face of everything we know about paranormal safety. From the moment we understand that the world is scary, we accept the idea that hiding under the covers provides adequate defense from monsters, ghouls, and ghosts. Serial killers and zombies might not be fended off by the sheets and pillows, but everything else should be. But in Deathbed, the mattress is what matters. The movie being a surrealist nightmare doesn't make this any less strange either. See, the deathbed came to be after a demon cried on a mattress. Let me try to explain a little better. Ages ago, there was a demon who loved a woman. He really, really wanted to sleep with her, so he summoned a bed for that purpose. They got busy, but the demon loving proved to be too much for the woman's fragile constitution, resulting in her death. Sure, the demon probably should have known that this would happen, but it was upsetting nonetheless. Grieving for his lost love, the demon did what anyone in a similar situation would do. He wept in bed. I do the same thing every time I accidentally kill somebody. I mean, uh, watch a Nicholas Sparks movie. Back to the movie, the demon's tears are made of blood, which curses the bed and gives it life. If the demon is resting, it's just a normal bed, but every 10 years he wakes up, which grants the bed the ability to consume people. Only one person has ever been spared, and even they have been trapped forever in a painting to watch more people fall victim to the bed. So yeah, that's a weird monster. A demonic bed that chows down on people every 10 years accompanied by a cursed painting all created by a demon who was a little too randy for his own good. Hell yeah. And finally at number one, we've got a killer condom. H.R. Giger is well known for creating some of the most iconic monsters to ever grace the big screen. What you might not have known is that he also designed the six-foot fanged condom integral to the plot of this raunchy 90s horror comedy. Yep, the same guy that designed the xenomorph put together a pernicious prophylactic. I mean, if you really think about it, it makes sense. The killer condom is far from serious, with a leading man by the name of Luigi Macaroni who gets his right testicle chomped off by the titular monster, or the testicular monster. Macaroni was sent to the hotel a quickie to figure out why all sorts of people have reported their members going missing and discovers the monster waiting within. Most strange horror monsters are made to be a stand-in for something else, whether it be sex, drugs, or rock and roll, but the killer condom says screw that and goes in deep. There aren't many creatures that are willing to be this on the nose, or on the... Well, maybe I'm not allowed to say that on YouTube. Just know you're in for a wild ride. Right on. Do you feel any weirder than when we began? Because I sure do. What did you think of the list? Have you seen any of these? All of these? What's your favorite weird movie monster? Are there any that tried too hard to be weird and ended up in the cursed tryhard zone? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more audacious ones from your top five scary werewolf urban legends. Daniel Young is doing his best Warren Zevin impression here. It's too bad you can't do voice comments. I'd like to hear your singing chops. Whenever you hear that piano riff, do you imagine werewolves of London or all summer long? Mark Pickering says, my favorite werewolf movies are an American werewolf in London, The Howling, and Ginger Snaps. What, no wolf cop? You got someone against liquor donuts? PK Thunder says, missed your chance to say like and subscribe, you dolt. Oh, that I did. I suppose now is as good a time as any to announce my retirement. Sorry, folks. Jared B says, my favorite werewolf book is R.L. Stein's Goosebumps, Werewolf of Fever Swamp. 
Fever Swamp, I haven't heard that name in ages. It's classic, classic stuff. I still very, very vividly remember the Goosebumps collection at my school library. And RJ Alert says, I live in Wisconsin. My friends and I used to love walking through the woods after midnight, many of which are next to big parks. One night a friend and I were walking down a hill and looked into a clearing surrounded by trees except for the path leading in. Under nothing but moonlight we saw a humanoid figure standing in the clearing. At that distance it was hard to make out any details, it looked completely white. We started walking towards the clearing and the figure turned away, hunching as if to go on all fours and ran away into the woods. I don't know what it was, I regret not having a camera. I mean, not having a camera probably saved your If you stuck around and snapped a shot, it might have torn you to bits. And life with the quarry, brackets topic, says, oh yeah, oh yeah. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I ride my bike with no handlebars the wrong way down a busy road, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more salacious strangeness. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. After reminding you it's all make-believe, Man, the fact that an entire feature film was made about... Man, if the fact that a... Well, I suppose that's what the... Lepus. Oh, sh Is it Lepus or Lepus? Unbelievable. It's Lepus, it is! That sounds so silly. Screaming victim and we're supposed to believe that it... They got busy, but the demon lovin' provided bloop. They got busy, but the demon lovin' provided prov Why am I reading proof provided? Um, they got busy, but the demon love- <laughs> Plot of this raunchy's nine- ugh. God damn it. Lichen suscri- God damn it. It can't thunder! <laughs> Unbelievable.